Hi everyone, Mr. Mark Wick here. Today's video, we're gonna be looking at home loans and in particular, how to calculate uh, monthly repayments and interest, uh, the amount of interest you will pay on a home loan. Um, so home loans obviously involve borrowing a substantially large amount of money, um, but paying it off over a longer period of time um, so that those uh, repayments are a bit more um, affordable, okay, a bit more manageable. Um, I'm gonna to touch on the idea as well of fixed rates and variable rates. For the sake of this course, we probably use a fixed rate for a particular amount of time and it might change at a given point within a home loan because as we said, home loans can be for a, a longer period of time, usually between 20, 25 or 30 years even. Um, so let's look at the first example here we've got where uh, a home loan um, for $120,000 is taken out over 25 years at 8.5% per annum, interest compounded monthly. So first thing we're gonna do is use the graphics calculator to calculate the monthly repayment. Um, again, before we do that, and this is basically you're working out um, when you're using the graphics calculator, you're showing what values you're putting in. So for N, N being the number of periods that the money is, um, or that the loan <coughs> is um, taken out for, it's 25 years. It's compounded monthly, so 25 times 12. That's the number of months or the number of periods. Um, the value of I, our interest rate as a percentage, we just pop in 8.5 on the graphics calculator. The present value, the principal, is the amount you borrow. So in this case, it's 120,000. Um, keeping in mind that when we borrow, PV is a positive value, okay? Because it's, it's an amount that you're receiving back. It becomes a positive. Um, really important when you're doing uh, borrowing that you put in a PV as a positive value. When you're investing, it's a negative value because it's the amount you're putting in. Now, the PMT, in this case, is what we're actually being asked to work out. So what do we need to pay per month in order to pay off that uh, loan, including interest over 25 years? Um, we want the future value to be zero. The idea is that we're completely paying the loan off, so bring it down to zero. PY and CY in this case will both be 12 um, because there are um, 12 payments and 12 compounding periods per year because it is being compounded monthly. So we're just popping those values into the graphics calculator and asking it to determine PMT for us. So um, within the financial section there, head into F2, compound interest, put in those values we've got, so 25 times 12, interest rate is 8.5%, 8.5. Present value, as we said, 120,000. PMT is what we're asking it to work out, so let's just leave that for now. Present value, we said we want to be zero, and PY and CY are both 12, as they are there. So let's just go ahead and ask it to determine PMT for us, so F4, which works out to be uh, $966, and just over 27 cents. Now, really importantly for borrowing, when you're paying back, we are gonna round this up to the next cent. So although it's 27.2 cents essentially, rather than rounding that down, we're gonna round it up to 28 cents so that we know that after 25 years, we've completely paid it off. There's not um, any money left owing in that account, right? So really important when you're borrowing, round up to the next cent with your regular repayments. So in this case, PMT is $966.28, okay? So based on that, um, what is the total, next question there, the total interest that you'll be charged? Now there's a few ways of doing this. Um, I'll quickly show you both here. So the total interest being charged is that payment, $966.28, times by the total amount of payments you make, which you worked out was 25 times 12, or that worked out to be uh, 300. Okay, so we're paying that $966.28, 300 times. Um, that's the total amount we pay, uh, and we're gonna subtract the amount we borrow as well. So subtract 120,000. So you can do that, um, calculation basically in your run function, your graphics calculator. So head out of here, head into the run function. It's just a basic calculation, um, $966.28 times by 300. We're doing that 300 times, sorry, try that again. 
times by 300 and take away 120,000 means that we would need to pay over the course of that home loan $169,884 in interest, okay, which is quite a lot. So $169,884. Now, you can actually see that that is actually more than what you borrowed. You're paying more interest than what you actually borrowed. And that's a common thing for uh, mortgages or home loans, okay? The other way of working out the total amount of interest, and it will give you a slightly different answer, but that's okay as long as you're showing your process, is if I head into the amortization function, so if I exit here back into the financial section uh, or the financial function, but within this financial function, I'm going to head into the amortization function here, F4. It's already got those things saved for me. 300 months, 8.5%, $120,000, etc. I'm going to change that PMT to exactly minus 966.28 because we rounded it up to the next cent. Um, and I'm going to ask it to tell me what's the total amount of interest I pay over the course of the loan. So from the first month, PM1, up until and including the last month, the 300th month, okay? Really important here that PM1 and PM2 refer to the, num the month number because um, we have been compounded monthly, okay? Or the interest has been compounded monthly. So then ask it to determine the total sum of all the interest, which in this case works out to pretty close to what we got. It is slightly different. It's off by, you know, about $8 there. But that's okay if you're telling us or showing the process. So, you know, you're working out might be the amortization that um, PM1 was 1, PM2 was 300. The PMT that we put in was minus 966 and 28 cents. Um, you can put in some extra things as well in terms of the, um, the interest rate um, and the present value, etc. But what we really want is the answer there. So the total sum of all the interest, okay, so that's the sigma symbol there. So total sum of all the interest is equal to $169,876.26, I think it was, right? So you can see there is a slight difference between those two answers. But again, if you're showing the process that you use, that is okay. Um, at least um, here in South Australia in the uh, in the exam and uh, in, in the test that we'll be doing um, in class. So that's how you can work out the total interest charge. Now, um, if, if you do need um, the interest to work out something else later, again, it doesn't really matter which one you're using um, as long as, you know, again, you've shown the working out for the one you've got. Now, um, the next question there says, what assumptions have been made in part A? Um, I spoke briefly at the start about the idea between a fixed or a variable rate. So what we're actually assuming um, in this example that we just did is that it was a fixed rate for a full 25 years at 8.5%, which in reality probably won't happen, but that's the assumption we're making. And for the sake of this course, a lot of questions will look like that. So we're assuming a fixed rate of 8.5% for the full 25 years. Okay, so that's one assumption that we've made there, okay? In reality, rates go up and down um, all the time. So um, this rate would more than likely change throughout the life of the loan. In fact, the next question, question C here, suppose after three years, say you had it fixed at 8.5% for three years, the interest rate increases to 9.5%. It says calculate the outstanding balance of the loan after three years. So what we're going to do for the first three years, we're going to um, basically work out how much do we owe still after three years at 8.5% because the first three years, after the first three years, we're still on that 8.5%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the compound interest section on my graphics calculator. And I'm actually going to just make a little bit of a tweak here. So N now becomes three times 12, okay? Because it's for the first three years. 
My interest rate, again, is going to remain at 8.5% for the first three years. It only changes after that. The present value is still the amount we borrowed of $120,000. PMT, we are going to use the PMT value that was given. we sort of got in um, part A of uh, repayment per month of $966.28. And in this case, we are going to put it in as a negative value because um, it's something that we're paying. Um, the present value, sorry, the future value is what we want to work out here. So this is what will the amount owing be after three years be? Okay, again, PY and CY will remain at 12 for the same reason they were in A because our compounding period is monthly. So put those values in. All I need to do though is make a few tweaks. I've already had those, most of those values in um, and then tell me, what is the future value going to be? Because we're not going to be able to pay it off in three years at, at that rate. What will still be left owing after three years? So what is the future value at the end of three years? There it is, $115,250. And let's round that up to 82 cents. So $115,250. And 82 cents is what is owing after three years, okay? So you still uh, owe quite a bit. In fact, you can see that really after three years, you haven't even quite paid off um, $5,000 yet, even though you're paying off you know, clo close to $1,000 a month, okay? And that's because of all the interest you're being charged, particularly early in um, the life of that loan, okay? All right, let's keep moving through. So it says to calculate the new monthly repayments. So if you did own that, Oh, so if you did owe that much at the end of three years, how much would you have to pay? So now my, my present value is actually that amount, $115,250.82. My interest rate goes up to 9.5%. Okay, that's the question. It's going up to 9.5% after the three years. Um, the number of periods remaining in the loan is 22 times 12. Why 22? Well, because I've already been paying it off for three years. It's a 25 year loan in total. So there are 22 years still left on that loan. So 22 times 12, interest rate of 9.5. That's my you know, present value, how much I owe. We're being asked to work out what the PMT or the payments per um, period will be. In this case, that's a question mark. We do want the future value after the 22 years to be zero. And again, PY and CY will remain as 12. So let's go ahead and import these values into a graphics calculator and ask it to solve PMT. So uh, number of compound, uh, sorry, number of uh, periods will be 22 times 12, 22 years every month. The interest rate goes up to 9.5%. Present value is now positive $115,250.82. Okay, even though it's owing, it's still um, a positive amount because you know we're dealing with the borrowing stuff here. Um, now what we're going to actually ask is what is the PMT? So let's just set that as zero for now. And we want the future value also to be down to zero. So what is PMT based on? 22 years at 9.5%, we still owe $115,250. PMT will now be, it's increased, obviously, because the interest rate has increased to $1,042, and we're rounding up to 40 cents. So PMT is 100, so 1,042 and 40 cents, okay, per month for the next 22 years. If, of course, and again, we're assuming, the rate of 9.5% remains the same for the next 22 years, which in reality, it probably won't. Um, the idea is that if you're on a variable rate, um, that, that rate could change at any time. The, um, uh, the, you know, the, the Reserve Bank actually meet, I think it's 10 times every year, um, and it's a 10 months out of every 12, um, and, and they make a decision on basically whether a cash rate goes up or down or stays the same. And then based on that, interest rates will go up or down or stay the same. And they'll generally be passed on to um, the customers and therefore your interest rate will go up or down, depending. Um, so anyway, 
for the sake of this, um, we will just be, for the sake of this course, we will just be given a, perhaps, you know, after three years, this is what the situation is. But again, there's lots of assumptions here in terms of, we're assuming, um, yeah, for the remainder of the 22 years, it stays at 9.5%, paying off that much um, to get the value down to zero, okay? Last question there says, to calculate the total interest paid, assuming the interest rate remains constant for the remainder of the loan, there you go. So here, we're paying off, 36 lots of $966.28 plus the extra um, tw 22 years um, of, of monthly repayments at 1042 which works out to be um, 264 months of $1,042.00. And forty cents, and that that number will give it to you on the calculator anyway. So if I go back into my graphics calculator, you can see that n is now two six four. So that's how many times you're repaying that amount, okay? And then that's how much you pay back in total. But we're also then going to take away the original amount that was borrowed, okay? So we'll take away that one hundred and twenty thousand um, dollars. Here, this is probably the best way to do this because there's um, two different. Um, repayments here and two different um, values of n so rather than using the amortization function um, this is probably the best way to do it more conventional way anyway so back in the run function i'll just head back in there and do this calculation as you see it here so 36 times by 966 dollars and 28 cents plus we're going to add the additional 264 payments of $1,042.40 and then that will be our total in fact that's the total amount repaid you know you, you borrow $120,000 that's how much you actually have to repay but the total amount of interest you're going to then subtract the amount you borrowed that initial principal of $120,000 and you can see it's more than what we worked out in question um, a part two of 169,000 here it's now 189,000 $979.68. So the total interest uh, is $189,000. What do we say? $979.68. Okay. So that's it. A, 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 like a basic example of how to calculate. Um, interest and repayments etc based on some pretty simple information and again there are there are some assumptions but for the sake of this course um this will probably be the sort of question you'll get um, around home loans and mortgages um, there will be a change in in the rate but generally given to you after a certain number of years and then you know the rest of the um <clears throat> the life of the loan will be based off that new rate for example okay so hopefully that helps yeah and thanks for watching guys